Hello and welcome. I hope you are doing super good. My name is Ramendu and I'm working as a senior engineer with Uber. I have been programming for more than a decade now. I believe that multithreading is one such concept which is way too abstract and difficult to understand if it is not taught in a proper manner. However, if the concepts are explained with relatable examples, it becomes a fun and engaging experience. That's what I have done in this course. I have broken down the difficult and abstract concepts in simple English which is really easy to understand. To make the things even more clear, I have presented relatable examples. I strongly believe that multithreading is one such tool which should be in the toolkit of every good programmer. It's impossible to imagine any highly scalable and efficient solution which does not use multithreading in some form. Thus, I am confident that this tutorial would be of great help if you wish to learn the nuances of multithreading. The entire video is split in smaller sections wherein I teach about a particular topic. Each topic is explained with some theoretical concept followed by the examples and then I implement the topic of discussion in Java to give you a proper working code example. The topics are taught in a bottom-up manner where I start from the very basics and then I build on the concepts layer by layer. By the end of this tutorial, you would become very confident and comfortable with the concepts of multithreading and that's my guarantee to you. I suggest you to do an active learning and take notes while you are going through the tutorial. Each of the section has some code implementation where I think out loud and implement the code. So I also suggest that you code along with me. In case you want to refer the code at later point of time, the GitHub code link should be given in the description. I wish you all the very best and I am confident that you would learn a great deal of things. The code examples are in Java. However, most of the concepts should be transferable in other languages as well which support multithreading in some capacity. So with that in place, let's get started. So what is the motivation for multithreading? By default, programming languages are sequential in nature. Code execution happens line by line in usual scenario. Consider the below code. So in this method, we have init db call, then we have download data call, then we have process on data, and then finally show the results. So in the usual scenario, all these things will be executing one by one. So first this will be called, then this will be called, then this, then this. But we have a problem. In a single threaded program, these instructions will be executed one by one and the time consuming section of the code can freeze the entire application. What is the solution? Well, figure out the time consuming tasks and decide if they can be run separately. If yes, run such tasks in separate threads. Let's have a quick layman explanation of how a time consuming step in your code can slow down or freeze your entire process. Let's say you invited your friend over to your place to watch this super cool movie. Being a great host, you decided to make some popcorn for your friend. But here is the catch. It will take some 5 to 7 minutes to prepare the popcorn. During the time you are involved in preparing the popcorn, your friend asks which movie are we going to watch today. Since you are super involved in making the popcorn, you don't respond. Your friend, even though feeling a bit weird about the situation, asks you again if you are ok, but thanks to your involvement in the process of making the popcorn, you don't respond. Situation becomes super strange. However, your friend tries one final time and asks you if they did something wrong. And thanks to your deep dedication in the process of popcorn making, you don't respond. By this time, your friend gets freaked out and punches you in the face and you reboot. But we all know this does not happen in real life unless you are playing a prank. We humans are naturally equipped to multitask. In this example, since you would be aware of the time it takes to prepare popcorn, 
you would probably prepare the recipe and put the pot on the stove and let the popcorn get prepared. While it's getting prepared, you are available to do anything if there is a need. So you figured out the task which is going to be time consuming, you started its execution and let it finish in its own line of execution. Effectively, you did not block other tasks on you and did not freeze entirely. If you follow line by line execution of tasks in your program, this kind of freezing situation may arise in your code if there is a task which takes longer time to execute. So what is the improvement? So in this case, let's go through the different calls. So init db is where you are initializing certain db related things. Then you have download data, then you process the data, then you show the results. So to me, it looks like downloading of the data is something which could take the major chunk of time. What we can do now is put this download data in some sort of other thread and everything else in some other thread. And in that sense, we can do a parallel processing and it will ensure that by the time we are waiting for downloading the data, everything else is not getting frozen up and our system is not lagging. So this is one such improvement we could do by the virtue of multithreading. So to give it a formal definition, multithreading is the ability of CPU to perform different tasks concurrently. Now let's have a quick explanation around concurrency versus parallelism. Concurrency is like having multiple tasks to do, but you only have one set of hands. You switch between the tasks doing a little bit of each one at a time. If you play a guitar, it's similar to that, where you play different notes and chords using your nine fingers. Even though you play each note separately, the switch is so fast and smooth that overall it appears as if everything is being played together. Parallelism on the other hand is again having multiple tasks, but now you have many friends to help you out. Each friend works on a different task at the same time, so all the tasks get done faster. So in summary, concurrency is doing multiple things all at once by quickly switching between the tasks and parallelism is doing multiple things at once by having different parts of the task been done simultaneously by different entities. Now let's learn about concurrency versus parallelism in somewhat more technical terms. So concurrency and parallelism are two terms which are used quite a lot and that too interchangeably while discussing multithreading. But there is a subtle difference. Let's talk more about it. Concurrency refers to the ability of a system to execute multiple tasks at the same time or nearly overlapping times so they seem like being executed at the same time. In concurrent systems, tasks may start, execute and complete independently of each other but they may not necessarily be executing simultaneously at any given moment. Concurrency is often achieved through techniques like multitasking where a single processor switches between executing multiple tasks rapidly or through the use of multiple threads or processes. Parallelism on the other hand refers to the simultaneous execution of multiple tasks to achieve faster performance or increased throughput. In parallel system, tasks are truly executed simultaneously either on multiple processors or multiple processor cores or through other means of parallel processing like distributed computing or GPU computing. Parallelism is all about breaking down a task into smaller non-related subtasks which can be executed concurrently to speed up the overall execution time. Thus, in the context of a hardware with a single CPU core, concurrency could be understood as a perceived parallelism or fake parallelism, even more so in scenarios where tasks appear to be running simultaneously but are actually being executed sequentially or in an interleaved manner. This is done by something called as time slicing algorithm. So in summary, concurrency is about managing multiple tasks or processes potentially interleaving their execution to give an appearance of simultaneous execution whereas parallelism on the other hand is about truly executing multiple tasks or processes simultaneously to achieve a fast performance. While the terms are related and often used together, they refer to distinct concepts in the context of computing. Now let's understand what is a process and thread. Process is an instance of program execution. When you enter an application, it's a process. The operating system assigns its own stack and heap area. Whereas thread is a lightweight process, it is a unit of execution within a given program. A single process may contain multiple threads. Each thread in the process shares the memory and the resources of the parent process. One single process could contain many other threads. Now let's learn a bit about the time slicing algorithm. Let's imagine 
we have multiple threads associated with the process. Somehow, the CPU has to ensure that all these threads are given a fair chance to execute. One such approach is to use the time slicing algorithm. So, uses time for the CPU is shared among the different threads. So, here is what happens. So, you see, sharing is time slicing. Let's say the green boxes represent one thread and the yellow boxes represent another thread, thread T1 and T2 respectively. And consider that this is the timeline and at this particular time, thread T1 is assigned to the CPU. Then after some time, thread T1 takes a break and we assign thread T2 to the CPU. And after some time, T2 is given some rest and thread T1 is assigned again to the CPU. So as you see, it's going into a back and forth manner where each and every thread is taking turns to run on the CPU one by one. So here what we are doing is we are basically slicing the time and we are assigning certain time quantum to the CPU. So here we have a CPU and these are the two different threads which are kind of taking its turn to be executed on the CPU. So this is how the time slicing algorithm works. Now what happens when we have enough CPU at our disposal? So let's say we have thread 1 and we have thread 2 and there are two CPUs. So in that case, thread 1 will run entirely on CPU 1 and thread 2 will run entirely on CPU 2. So it's effectively a parallel kind of processing wherein we are not sharing anything on a given CPU. Rather, each thread has a dedicated CPU and it does not need to bother about whether it has to share the CPU with the other thread or not. And please note that I have put CPU here, but it could be a different core in the CPU itself. So it could be either different cores of a given CPU or it could be different CPUs. So that depends on the hardware. In such kind of setup, we can achieve the parallel processing. Now let's look at some of the pros and cons of multi-threading. The first one is we can build responsive applications. So now you don't have to worry about freezing uh, situation and thus you can build your applications to be responsive. Second is you will have a better resource utilization because now with the use of multi-threading, you could ensure that your hardware or your CPU is not sitting idle. Rather, once it's idle, it could be taken up by some other thread for execution. And the third thing is it helps us into building performant applications. So with the help of multiple core CPUs, we can build parallel programs and essentially we could get some benefit on the side of performance as well. Now coming to the cons of the multi-threading, the first one is synchronization needs to be done and it can get tricky at times. So essentially when you are doing multi-threading, you need to share the memory space and other resources with a process. And in that case, let's say when there is a process and there are certain number of threads, you need to share the resources. So we need to ensure that we are not running into funny situations. And those things are handled by something called as synchronization. We will have a much more focused discussion around all these things later in the video. The second thing is, it is difficult to design and test multi-threading apps. So essentially, you don't have a control in which the different threads could execute. So in that sense, it's difficult to predict the behavior of the threads. So it's difficult to design and test multi-threaded applications. And the third thing is thread context switch is expensive. So if there are more than required number of threads, then it becomes detrimental to your system performance. So multi-threading is not a silver bullet which will help you with all the situations. Rather, we should use it judiciously. Now let's have a look on the thread life cycle. Any thread will start its lifetime in the new state and every thread is in this state until we call start on it. After we have called a start on it, it goes to something called as active state and this active state has two substates. Either it could be runnable or running. As we saw in the earlier slides, in some cases we may have to do some sort of time slicing. Then in that case, there could be five threads which are ready to run but there is no CPU available on which it could run and we have called a start on such threads. So those threads will be in runnable state and there could be certain threads which will be in running state and as soon as those running state threads are done, then they could allow the threads in the runnable state to run again. And this is what we mean when we say that it has two substates which is runnable and running. Effectively, this is the active state and the third state is the blocked state 
So every thread is in this state when it is waiting for some thread to finish. So let's imagine there are two threads T1 and T2 and then they both started running on the CPU and after some time T1 got a chance and it was executing its task. After some time it had to be taken out of the CPU and T2 got a chance. But now T1 is not completed. It's waiting for its execution to complete because T2 is now on the CPU. So T1 is in a blocked state and this is what we mean by the blocked state. Now T1 will get a chance to execute on the CPU and maybe it may be done with its entirety of execution and then it goes to a state called as terminated state. So every thread is in this state after it's done doing its required task.